sponsored by Winwing Technologies. They couldn't offer the full cockpit, but we think this is the next best thing. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. We're back in the Mirage F1 CE and today we're having a look at four relatively small things. Selected jettison, radar warning receiver, countermeasures and autopilot. First, selective jettison. We have stores on the fuselage station, both wing stations and the wing tip station. So first let's get rid of the fuselage station. We are going to go selective jettison switch to fuselage. Open up this guy here and press that button. Next, the inboard wing pylons. So go to one and push the button. And the outboard wing pylons go to two. Push the button. And finally, the sidewinders. Open him up and click him. Oosh! Also, there's the emergency jettison button. If I open up the emergency jettison button and press that, all of the stores will fall apart from the sidewinder or wingtip pylons. Oosh! That's what you'll press, for instance, if you get jumped by a baddie MiG and you need to suddenly dogfight. Next. RWR radar warning receiver. This listens for foreign radars. First, make sure it's turned on. Make sure this switch here is forward, which it is. This is the RWR panel. We have a test switch here, which doesn't appear to be working, and a light intensity knob. We can tell which direction we have detected radar from on this very antiquated picture of an aeroplane here. If it detects radar from the front, we'll show red there. Port side there, starboard side there, and rear there. It'll tell you which type of radar signal it's detecting. Track. Track while scan or continuous wave. Track is when, for instance, an aeroplane like an F-16 has you in an STT, single target track, but it will not, for instance, detect if he is locking me with a bug or, strangely, a TWS track. TWS stands for track while scan. That actually detects when an air-to-air -air missile is fired at me, as we'll show you in a minute. Continuous wave. This will show when a radar-guided surface-to-air missile is being fired at us. Most of them, anyway. Some of them won't show. RC is 25 miles on my front with a modern F-16 fighter. So, first of all, RC, just kind of scan me, search me, but don't actually track me. I just want to see that I can detect your radar. You can see there, you can hear the little blips. That is his pulse squishing over me. Tick, tick, tick. Also, you can see that it's coming from the front quadrant. Next, RC, can you please get me in an STT, single target track? Yep. You can see now he's tracking us. RC, when you're in firing range, please shoot a Fox 3 active uh, missile at me. Stand by. Yeah, tell me when you do it. All right. Three, two, one. And you can see now we've got audio warning and TWS is showing there. That's going to be our air-to-air -air missile warning in this case. And we're dead. I won't bother doing the uh, surface-to-air missile. But if it was a surface-to-air missile, obviously the continuous wave radar will be in use. And that's what we'll show. Countermeasures. Chaff and flare. Select our plane. Loadout. Three options we can have realistically. 15 flare and 30 chaff. Or... 60 chaff and zero flare or 30 flare and zero chaff you'll base that on the known threat if you don't know what the threat is just go with 30 and 15. next set the program up select the plane click additional properties flare first because it's simple flare burst count how many flares come out per burst i want three to come out no four what second interval do you want between each of the flares in the burst? Uh, three seconds. Next, chaff. There are two levels to this. There's burst and salvo. One salvo is made up of several bursts. So, let's set the burst up. How many chaffs per burst? Three. Time interval between each of the three chaffs in the burst? 0 0.2 seconds. In the salvo, how many bursts do we want? Two. And what time interval between the bursts? One second. This is our countermeasure panel. Remaining chaff, remaining flare. Do we want to activate just chaff, just flare, or both? Do we want to have the system de-energized? Or 
but we want to be able to fire just one chaff and or just one flare with the push of the button and the button is that there or with the push of that button do you want to be able to trigger a burst of chaff and or flare or with the push of the button do you want to trigger a salvo of bursts of chaff and or flare let's see what that looks like single chaff only push the button on chaff flare on flare both one flare one chaff next i'm going to skip burst and then go straight to salvo i'm going to fire one salvo containing i think three bursts i put in one two three wait one two three wait and that's it that was my salvo of two bursts i meant to say uh what about flares uh i don't actually have a salvo of flares so it will just trigger a burst of flares which i think was four flares with a second in between something like that two three seconds in between wasn't it three and i think one more there and then there's just spam if i want to spam i just go single i go both and i just press the button manically finally autopilot we only need one button for this and that's going to be autopilot disconnect trigger it's a bit like a temporary override for the autopilot so to first engage the autopilot, we have to put it in its default mode, which is attitude hold. To do that, press and hold the disconnect trigger and press this with the mouse. That has put us in attitude hold. If you want to override the attitude hold and set a new attitude hold, press and hold the disconnect trigger, fly the plane to a different attitude, let go of the trigger, and it's now holding that attitude. I can add an extra layer, I can add an altitude hold. Altitude hold added. It's modal, so I can turn altitude hold off if I want. Turn it back on. As well as altitude hold, I can add in bearing or heading hold cap. It's now gonna hold the heading. But which heading is it gonna hold? Well, it's gonna turn me onto the heading as selected by the HSI bug. The HSI bug, this is the HSI by the way, is that little guy there. Currently set to north. Let's show what happens if I speed it up. Ping, 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 ping. There, it's uh, leveling me out at north. What if I want to adjust that? I turn this knob down here. That one there. Turn it. You can see I'm adjusting the bug on the HSI. Can you see that? The bug is moving. Three zero zero. Speed it up. It's now going to move to three zero zero. While all these guys are selecting, I can override them by pressing and holding the disconnect trigger. I can change my attitude, say up here, let go of the disconnect trigger, and it reverts back to basic attitude hold. And finally, to turn the autopilot off, just press that. Autopilot is disengaged. That is the basic functions of the autopilot. We also have a light dimmer switch here. We also have two more items, R and G. R, ILS localizer. G, ILS glide slope. These will be used in collaboration with the ILS instrument landing system, which we'll look at later. That summarizes selective jettison, RWR countermeasures, and basic autopilot. I hope that was useful, and see you later.